Hey toy collectors, welcome to another super exciting, outrageous toy review. Today we're taking a look at Toxo Viper, the Cobra Hostile Environment Trooper. Here we've got the loose Toxo Viper. You can see he's mostly purple with some red, black, and teal or green details to him. His sculpt is pretty nice. He's got a fair amount of details sculpted on him. Not a lot of additional weaponry sculpted on him like some characters do, like guns and holsters and things like that. But uh, he does have a pretty cool design. Oxo Viper's head is sculpted to look like he's wearing a rebreather type apparatus and a hood to go underneath his hazmat suit. His head's molded in purple. There's some flesh painted on with some brown eyeballs and eyelids. On his chest, he has this green rebreather, air purifier, whatever you want to call it, device on his chest with some hoses that wrap around to his back. His arms are pretty plain, other than some wrinkles on them. He has some red gloves that have some sort of studs sculpted on them that are not detailed real well. There's nothing really picked out on them uh, with paint or anything like that. On his waist, he has what looks like a belt, or maybe it's just a seam. The shirt is very bunched up around his hose, but then there's nothing really sculpted into that waist piece. It's pretty plain. He's got plain legs. He's got tall black boots underneath them that look like like 90s ski boots almost. With the little stripes on the side and the little ribbed striped area on the back. I think the boots are pretty cool looking though. Toxo Viper's most prominent accessory is his helmet. It is a very bizarre design. It's sculpted out of green plastic. It has this large mohawk-like fin on the top. Tubes that go around to the front. It's got a red rebreather mask area here, a brown faceplate, and yellow eye slit. It kind of makes me think of what a 3 and 3 quarter inch mask figure would have been like if Hasbro or Kenner had released them at some point. It snaps on the figure very tightly. It does wiggle a little bit, uh, but it just kind of friction fits on this collar piece, which I think is nice. It's good for a helmet like that to seal all the way down. Some of the later characters... In G.I. Joe that should have had airtight helmets on, like some of the Star Brigade guys, did not have this kind of articulation. I also think it's a shame this mold didn't get reused for Star Brigade. I think these guys could have made really great looking astronauts. Toxo Viper comes with a black backpack. It's an odd backpack for sure. Lots of technical detail sculpted on here. It's got these little ridge panels that support these dangling canisters. There's some other canisters sculpted on, and then there's tubes out here on the top. There's a little fan here, I assume, to compress some air. The front of these tubes don't connect to anything, and they just have sort of like a line sculpted in them for details, so I'm not really sure what's going on with that. I do kind of like that the backpack has a similar vent type of thing. It just kind of reminds me of the helmet a little bit to give it a little coordination. You do have to be careful with this backpack. I do find these at toy shows sometimes with one or both canisters broken off. Toxo Viper includes a really bizarre looking gun. It's got two different brackets here. It's got two handles. It's got a peg and a real stubby little front end there. We could assume this is a sniffer device for reading in toxic situations or we could assume that it sprays toxic fumes it's really not well described this was later reissued with this center section filled in uh, as one of those like 90s accessories that a million people got on a little figure sprue toxo viper also included a black hose that connects his backpack to his gun somehow making me think one of these canisters is air for him to breathe and the other one is toxic fumes for him to blast away at the Joes. It is possible to have the Toxo Viper hold his gun using both handles, but I feel like it puts a lot of strain on his thumb, so I don't usually do this. I generally like to army build Cobra Troopers, but I don't have very many Toxo Vipers. Between their backpacks being fragile, and the fact that to me they're kind of useless if you don't have a helmet for them, I'm not that encouraged to pick up figures uh, and slowly piece them together. And that's generally the way figures come into my collection. I rarely buy complete figures. Uh, I just kind of like get collections and uh, pick up things at flea markets and yard sales and stuff and slowly put together complete figures. And it's a little tricky with these accessories. Toxic Viper has standard G.I. Joe articulation with a ball joint at his head. Let's look up and down and around to the sides. 
Of course, once his helmet is on, that articulation point is not accessible. His helmet has slight movement to it, so it's almost like the head is still articulated with the helmet on. He has shoulder swivels and hinges. He has a swivel at the bicep and a hinge at the elbow there. He's got an O-ring that holds his body together, which lets his torso pivot. The way that attaches to his hips allow them to move out to the side and forward backwards. And then, of course, he's got bends at the knees. I always liked that G.I. Joe and Cobra had many arch-rival characters as far as their military speciality. But I never understood why they didn't release them in the same year, or at least in back-to-back -back years, so they would be on store pegs for at least some of the same time. A kid that got into G.I. Joe in 1985 and picked up Airtight probably wasn't still into G.I. Joe in 88 to get Toxo Viper, and a kid that got Toxo Viper had no way of even maybe knowing that Airtight existed. The Toxo Viper file card talks about Cobra not wanting to spend the money on expensive, clunky uniforms for Toxo Viper, so they use kind of bare-bones equipment, and hopefully that encourages them to get their work done faster. It also expresses the fact that being a member of the Toxo Vipers squadron, the, the leaky super brigade, is a punishment uh, for Cobra Troopers. And I think that's one of the best examples of like colorful description on a G.I. Joe file card by Larry Hama. Larry created so many great characters in the G.I. Joe mythology between the file cards and the comics, but I just think that's a really great example of amazing humor worked into a G.I. Joe file card. The Toxo Vipers are pretty garishly colored. That purple and that green uh, are quite bright, as well as the orange gloves. But I know I always thought the purple looked cool as a kid. I wasn't that obsessed with things being real world, especially on the Cobra side. So I thought Techno Vipers and Toxo Vipers looked very cool. I didn't really know what to do with them as a kid, though, other than to just pretend he could shoot, like, Toxic Sludge. In the comments down below, let me know what you think of Toxo Viper's outlandish appearance. Thanks for watching this super exciting, outrageous tour review. Make sure to like, subscribe, and check out our other videos.